Good day, everyone. It's what time is it? I don't even know what. Uh, oh, six. Dang, six twenty-six already. I'm tired. I was downtown earlier today. I went home for a second. Did a video and I had to come out and do some errands real quick. Deliver some stuff to some people. A few groceries here and there. Um, just one person actually. <laughs> um, this is a lot going on, man. These past fifteen months has been been very. Just thinking about it today. I want to apologize um, to Miss Phillips. I've um, been ripping and running long days from like 5 o'clock in the morning to sometimes 11 at night. I haven't had a lot of time to really focus on a lot of things. You know, I'm trying my best to help as many people out. People reach out to me every single day um, throughout the nights. I get phone calls throughout the nights, you know, about missing people, about this one getting murdered. You know, and it's very hard from all over, all over, you know, and um. I'm just one, I'm just, uh, I'm just one person, you know, we got a skeleton crew, we're all trying to do our best to help out as much as possible besides feeding, um, clothing the homeless and people in the community, and I give downtown, the bread of life, I give almost 100 hours a week, real talk, no lies, you know, and I still try to bounce everything off, but, um, I miss going to City Hall because when I go to City Hall, I speak about our loved ones and action is taken. See, once you go to city, your City Hall and talk to the city council members and the mayor, actions are taken. And with this coronavirus, everything is slowed down. The Malia Davis case, the Sarah Pertino case, you know, um, the Roger Carter case, and now we have Malia Bass case. You know, it's just, the thing is, our tops of reports are taking forever to get back, to even get answers, you know, and the thing is, it, it hurts because everyone reach out, hey, what's going on, you know, I can't say what's going on, you know, I, on my end, I spread awareness and I try to bring together a timeline, you know, I bring awareness, I'm going to start with, with uh, Malia, last year, May, we searched every day for Malia, from 6 o'clock in the morning some days to 10 o'clock at night, Just looking for Malia in the dark, in the woods, in the parks, in the bayous, you know, meeting in shopping centers late at night, speaking for hours, what we're going to do the next day. And it passed out thousands and thousands of flyers, you know, and everybody don't have the opportunity to do that because sometimes we hear about incidents a week or two or three later. And we, when something happens, you have to get it right there and then. You know, a lot of people, people hey, Mr. John, how you doing? I'm good. I need your help. My, my loved one was murdered or missing three weeks ago, a month or a year ago. We have to catch it right to get awareness, to get it out there the right way. You have to get the publicity in the first 72 hours, I'll say. Sorry, in the first 72 hours. Malia's situation, we search every day, every day, every day, every night. And I'll never forget, I asked Brittany one question. I said, do you know what Darian brother live at? He, she said no to my face. She said no. But I remember, if you go back to my timeline... I made a comment, and I said that um, the police are looking for Darren. He's hiding. She called me and said, Darren's not hiding. I didn't pay it no mind. You know, because we everybody was sitting around making, taking notes and some different things. But then when she did an interview last month with a guy that does tattoo, she made a mistake and said that she went to Joe's house, and Joe followed back and called 911. Her and Joe spend the whole day driving around. But I asked her that question. Do you know where Joe... Remember, Malia got killed at... Well, disappeared at Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, the Tuesday. I asked her that question that Tuesday. Do you know where Darren's at? No, I don't. Do you know where Joe live at? No, I don't. I don't even speak to Joe. But then that Thursday, she, she made a comment. She went to Joe's house and Joe pulled a gun at her on her but she just told us that Tuesday that she didn't know where Joe was Joe live at and after that I haven't seen her anymore after that after that and um it's sad because when she did an interview last month a month before last whatever my last six weeks ago I'll say did an interview she told a young man that she went to Joe's house and Joe followed her back home so my thing is what are you, I, I, I fought, uh, Brittany, I, I was at your side, I was fighting for you, I was, I was, tell me, don't, don't, don't bash her, 
Don't do. I, I literally fight for people, man. People understand. When I go out on a limb for you, I go out on a limb for you. I went to war for you. I never spoke bad about you. I always say, hey, the person that everything falls on is Darion. But when you lied to me like that, and you said that you know what Darion bro live at, and you you know what Darion is at, but then you just said you went to his house. You see what I'm saying? Because when she when she told somebody the gun was pulled, I don't like to go by he say she say that Joe pulled a gun on her to get her from the door. To me about that, someone else relate the message, which I don't I didn't believe it. So I'm afraid that someone relate the message. People always say he say she say. That's one thing. I don't go by he say he say she say. If I can't have proof or evidence on my own, I don't go by what people are saying. So the thing is this: whenever an incident happened, you have to get it right away. Not two weeks later, you have to get it right away. Because when you're trying to reach out to news stations and producers, they pick and choose what story they want to have, okay? They got hundreds of stories every single day. And they got to pick and choose, pick and choose, pick and choose, pick and choose. And if they say, yes, we're going to do an interview to you today at 5 o'clock or tomorrow at 7 in the morning or whatever, that might change. They might get a break in news. And for these news stations, it's about the ratings. It's about the ratings, who watching their show. It's about the ratings, ratings. I'm being real, it's about the ratings. You have a few reporters, like Randy has a heart. Natasha has a heart. Um, Ivory have a heart. They actually understand your story and they feel your pain. I'm being real about this, man. You know, so when I asked Britain the question, do you know where Joe live at? I think Darren is, is living, staying there. Oh, no, Joe's not. No, I don't know where Joe live at. I never been to his house. But I interviewed six weeks ago. You said that you went to Joe's apartment. You knocked on the door. He came out. And y'all went looking. He came back to your house. Followed to your, went back to your apartment and called 911. Malia is missing. But my question is, how did you get back in the house? If you didn't have your key, or did you leave the door? I'm, I'm just I'm just putting two and two together, you know. So end of the day, if, if you if you do simple lies like that, that means you're hiding something. If someone killed my daughter, or my son, and we in a relationship, married or, or engaged, or this boyfriend and girlfriend, you think I'm gonna hide you? I'm gonna protect you for what? Why are you protecting Darion? Is my question. Because you, I don't forget nothing. You lied to me and Sparrows. And said, you, you don't know where Darian Brown live at. Because we said we think he's at his brother's house. But now came out six weeks ago. A little interview you had getting a tattoo. Laughing and giggling. You stated that you went to Joe's apartment or house, whatever. And y'all went back to your apartment. And he dialed 911. And he asked start looking for Malia. Why did you lie to me? We was out there every day fighting for your daughter. We are complete strangers. We fought every day for Malia. That's when Craig came out there that day. When I first met Craig at um, Sunday, that Sunday, the first Sunday, Malia disappeared Friday, Saturday, Sunday, at um, first call. He was pissed. He was mad. Craig was, I'm, I ain't gonna lie, Craig was pissed off. What the hell happened to my daughter? Craig was, he was angry and, and he's still angry. I'm, I'm being, just being real. You know what I'm saying? He was pissed off. Some folks don't like to be on camera. Some people don't like to see, keep their lives private, and I respect that. But when it comes to my child, I'm going to speak and fight. And that still pisses me off. People always freaking lie. If someone hurts your daughter, and the video shows he's carrying your daughter in a basket, why, on the, why are you fighting for him? Is he protecting you is my question. What else do we know? Because remember, Darion said, man, remember this, Darion said, I did not kill Malia Davis. I only moved her body on that picket fence that stand about what four feet tall. There's a quarter inch gap between these. I did a video. You could go back to my timeline and watch the video from last year. I did a video. It's a quarter inch picket. So if I'm sitting outside, sitting inside on that fence smoking a cigarette, like Brittany says she was, and Malia walked by, not even six feet from. The fence, the patio fence, the patio picket fence to walk inside. I could see inside the fence. I could see outside the fence. And when the child walked, the child would look. Hey, mommy. Hey, daddy. 
because it's a quarter inch gap and you're smoking a cigarette. So when you smoke cigarette, that smell comes out. The smoke goes up and people will smell that. So when Malia's walking, I know she looked at that patio and said, hey, mommy. Hey, mommy. I know she, I promise to God, I know she done that. And they could watch that camera. They could watch that footage and they can see that. She acknowledged her mother in that video. I know she did. So you telling me you packing to go out of town. You, you have no idea. No idea your daughter's in the house. When a child come in their house, a young kid. Hey, mom, 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 dad, dad. A teenager? Nah, they in their own world. They're in their own world. A teenager live in their own world. When you're a child on the, say, 12 years old, you look in the house. Hey, mom. Hey, dad. If someone is walking away six feet from your patio with a quarter inch gap, the gap is like this big. So I, I could see from a distance. And I sh if you go back and watch the video last year, I did this video for a purpose and reason for a day like this. I did this video for a year ago, 15 months ago. Well, 14 months ago, I did the video for a day like today what I'm talking about. Okay. And that's the honest to God. I have nothing to lie about. You know. End of the day. I don't know what happened in the house of Malia Davis. I was not there. But I don't believe you should protect that young man. If you know he was the whole time. That's just something I don't. That, that, that was wrong. So when I told you Brittany. Get out there and speak to the public. If you were innocent. Go out there and speak to the public. Let the people. Let the community fight for you. Let the community fight for you. Because if. Anyone come out, come out there and fight for their child. People might have their own say it's O's and be skeptical about what you're saying, but this the community will still fight for you. Now it leads to this day now that I'm analyzing everything. Like, hold up, she lied to me. She just said six weeks ago she went to pick up Joe and they start driving around, went to the house, dial 911 and all that. Why do you have to get Joe to call 911? Is my question. Why you have to drive Way down the street, about what, three, four miles away, to pick up Joe, which you claim you know where he live at, y'all don't speak at all, to come back 911 for you. That's something I do not understand. I will never understand that. But when you did that video and you said that <laughs> you picked up Joe and yo, he came to the house, yes, I drive around, that was, come on, man. The next in the car, a pair. A Highway 6, detail and clean. It doesn't make any sense. That's why that Sunday when I got it, I was like, God, you telling me at 6 o'clock, it was a beautiful day. The sun was out, it wasn't raining. It was sunny. Summertime. And Darion walked over a mile or two to the hospital with his son in his arm. I said, Brittany, look around you. All these, we at the mall. He got dropped off at the mall, off Highway 6 area. All these businesses open, you got all these restaurants, so people driving. If someone dropped me up and kidnapped my child, I'd be like, help, help. And that's been kidnapped. Help, 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 help. Call the police. Help. I'll give a full description. But from the first day this incident happened, I went out to Greens Road in 59, and I met EquiSearch, and I knew, I knew it was lies. I knew, I just... You broke down, drove into an empty field across from a, gra a gas station, an apartment complex with lights. It doesn't make any sense. Fast forward, we're going to January now. With Taraji Carter, another three-year-old, Mimi Phillips. As you guys will request on Facebook, Mimi Phillips. Um, a young mother has a few kids. She um, got the news that her daughter was deceased. You know, um, so once she knew they was raising her daughter and understanding the whole story that the daughter um, was taken to the hospital and next thing you know, she was pronounced dead, you know. So she was taken to the hospital, the Tua Hospital, north side of town, and transported to Texas Children's Hospital. But on the way to the hospital, she did, she passed away in the ambulance. And that's the official police report. The way in the ambulance. You know, so in the day, Mimi wants answers to what happened to her daughter. 
Was she ill? Did she, you know, what, what, why did she pass? Was she abused? Why did she pass? You know, so those are questions that she wants to know. Those are questions that Mimi wants to know for Taraji Carter. You know, and no one knew about the story. Um, I was one of the first ones to know about the story. A, a, a couple weeks later, I found out about the story. And like I said, I wish I had got it right there and then right away because I would have been able to give it the publicity it needs to get out there. But I'm still working on it. Right now, the coronavirus slows everything down. It's sad because just to get an interview, it's very hard to get interviews right now. It's very, very hard. You know, and um, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish I would have got this story within the first 48 hours, I'll say, 72 hours, give or take, to find out more. Because the longer it waits, Oh, um, she Sue, she was three years old. Taraji Carter is three years old. She became deceased on January 23rd of 2020. You know, and that that struggles a lot of people's mind. Uh, the police is still investigating. Uh, they have a lot of camera on the property. I did a, a post um, in, in a January, February, actually, of the cameras on the property. You know, and pretty much nothing came of that. You know, so we are really trying to get answers to that. Also, I don't. I'm not judging anyone. She, she. I don't know. If she was ill. I don't know. She was abused. I don't know nothing. It's just the point being that we are trying to get answers right now because the healthy baby happened to have a, having the heart to stop. You know, um, it really, really, it really tears a lot of people's minds apart. We fast forward now to Malia Bass. You know, Malia Bass, If you, everyone knows the story around Houston now, you know, that um, the first interview stated that she was left outside, and the second interview stated that she was taken, she was missing the night before. You know, sometimes people do get scared with all the police brutality and stuff going on right now. Hey, Gina, um, in the world right now. Hey, Lynn. Stacy, how you doing? Um, a lot of things that happen right now in this world with police with power, the people are actually afraid of speaking out because they don't want to get framed for murder, they don't want to be abused but the thing is man and I spoke about this last night, you have to be more aware, you know you, you never leave your child unattended I'm going to tell you something, when you in a relationship with someone, boyfriend or girlfriend, or engaged or married, or living together as a couple I don't care if you're one month together or three or five or six or, or ten years you never get to know that person all the way. You never do. You know, so people, we always say, learn who, you, who you're dating and who you sleep with. But sometimes that means nothing. Because a lot of us, 99.9% .9 of us in this world, do not do any background check. Okay? And <laughs> we don't. We do not. Some people be with their boyfriends or husbands for years and found out years later they were molesting their daughters and sons. And I'm being real about that. So I'm not here to judge nobody, but... Literally got to war. I will go to fight for you. I will fight for you. But end of the hey, lady, hell, Anita, Lisa, Tanya. Um, I will fight for you all the way. But I'm actually I could help so many people, man. If you understand the mind frame and the potential that we that we have within our little small little organization. We are fighting for people every week. But when I go to war for you, I need the truth because I'm gonna tell this. When there's cameras around, that's called evidence. Okay? When there's cameras around, there's evidence. That's why I stated, I'm punching my timeline for Malia Bass from Thursday night all the way to early Saturday morning. And that camera that's over there, there's like six or seven cameras against the wall besides the ones by the office. And they capture the walkway. So if somebody walk out with Malia Bass alive, they'll see that. If someone walk out with Malia Bass in their arm, they'll see that. I'm gonna be I'm being real about that, man. So I tell people right now, protect yourself. I had one situation a long time ago up in it was um it was in Dallas. DeSoto. Same situation. Young man, this happened, I think, was it um 2013, I think it was summer 2013, excuse me, the man lived in Oklahoma, he used to be in the service, he wanted to be, get back with his ex-wife, 
So he came back, drove from uh, Oklahoma to back to Dallas, shot the ex-wife, the neighbor's kids, and his, and his son. And his son. So then he drove back into Oklahoma. He got the phone call. Police called him down. Remember, he shot his ex-wife, killed her, I think he killed two of the neighbor's kids, and his son was injured. Now, this, this is crazy. Here go the twist to this story. This man on TV, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. Who did this to my son? Uh, I love my son. Oh, my God. You cowards, come on out. They didn't know. So when the police questioned his son, my dad, because him and his mom was arguing, and he didn't want to, she didn't want to get back with him. So he got his gun and shot them. And that's how he got arrested. Then he got on TV talking about, oh my God, I need medication. I'm bipolar. Had no medical history at all. From being armored for years, he was bipolar, but he was taking medication. That's what I'm telling you, man. I, read my words. Read my lips. I can help you. If you need help the right way. But tell me the truth. You get in trouble and you're about to get arrested. And you want to say, okay, no, it's too late. Because I gave the opportunity. In Dallas, I think it was 2013, if I'm correct. Um, in DeSoto. Man shot his wife, ex-wife and son. Son survived. And said that he didn't know his son survived. Because the detective who were clever. The detective said the, the boy's mother, the neighbor's kids, and the boy passed away. They, the little boy, the young, the son was alive the whole time, and he tells, he said that his father shot him. You see, he recovered, and that's the way to find who who shot, who killed his mother and the, his friends from the neighborhood. So, end day, guys, you have to be careful, man. Don't take the rap for someone, especially when it comes to your child. Don't ever do that, because the longer you wait. And the more evidence comes out, if you're an innocent party, you're gonna, you look bad. They're not gonna believe that. Oh, all this time, you're telling me that you knew about this, but you was afraid. You had, you had a chance to break away. Doing it. See, people understand. When people, when the police call the parties in, they interview them separate it's for hours, and they ask you over and over. You have anything you want to say. First, they, they tell you your rights. You have the right. To, to, to get a, a attorney if you can't afford the courts will pay for one for you which is called a a, 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 a court attorney a point attorney through the state which you know damn well they just say sign down the line and go you know then you have hey Chris and Heather love you guys hey guys reach out to Chris and Heather for um Jasmine Sevilla Foundation they do, they're doing wonderful work in the community you know their baby also was taken and you know the truth is one of the guys, young man, get got out of jail on bond, which is to me is wrong. This now, this young man could run if you want to run. You see, that's it's the system. I don't know what's wrong. What what do we wait for? I don't. I, I know there's protocols you got to take, but sometimes I believe that this want us to keep on killing ourselves within our blacks and Latino community, within the low community. I mean, the, the thing I look at with with Chris Day's story was lies. It was a red truck, white man, blue eyes. See someone at five o'clock in the morning in the dark. They look through your window to another window and see the guys at night and early in the morning. Everyone in the city looking for looking for a red truck. They arrest them. It's, it's, it's crazy. Oh my God! It's crazy how they arrest a, a young man that fits the description. And if I'm correct, I think the young man. Can, I'm not sure. He, he committed suicide because of the negative publicity he was getting about his name. If I'm, I got to do some real. I saw a clip him for sure that he, he committed suicide. You know, but I'm telling you, man, if you're doing wrong out there, it might not be today. It might be next month. It might take ten years, twenty years. What's up, Capo? But end of the day, justice will come. We're losing too many kids. That's why us, we all talk about black, black, black lives matter, black lives matter, black lives matter. But how the hell does it matter if we can't even protect the 
speak out for what happened. How did we, we can't fight for we're not fighting for Malia. We're not fighting for which was killing Dallas. We're not fighting for Taraji Carter. We're not fighting for, for Jasmine Sevilla. We're not fighting for Malia Bass. We're not, we're not fighting for them, man. I thought that's what angers me all the time. Because we're not. We could do all the balloon releases we want to in the world. For that one up well, at one time. They don't really stand in line and fight for you like they're supposed to. There and and share these loved ones' names. That's how you keep the name relevant. That's how you put pressure on the police department to keep on fighting. Because once the case they go one or two years and the trial's still going on, course, we tend to forget it. What happened to these kids? You know, I'm not gonna lie, man. I'm tired. I'm tired of getting the phone calls and the messages that another child was murdered. I'm tired. I'm seriously tired, man. We yell brown lives matter, black lives matter, all lives matter. That's the case. You parents know what your kids did to these kids. Sorry, I, I just um, got like a, a glitch on my phone just now. But I'm telling you, mothers, for the last time, man. <laughs> I'm telling you this. When your children coming home telling you they did a crime, turn them in. At least you can see them live another day behind bars. But the life that took from people like us to lost our children, you don't know how that feels. You don't. You go to church and sit in the front row and praise God and bring never send your church, your, your son or daughter a Christian all of a sudden now. There wasn't Christians before this incident happened. Now they are, which is good. But stop protecting them. Let them be accountable for their actions. Because with the money, I'm telling you, man, science is amazing because with science and all this DNA and modern technology and stuff, pretty soon it's going to be hard to get away with murder. I'm telling you for a purpose and a reason. It's going to be very hard. And it just hurts me to see a lot of these Young men commit murder in these streets, even young ladies. And they tell their parents, and their parents move them out of town right away. Or oh, you're going to live in Louisiana. You, you go to New York. You go to Chicago. You go to L.A. You go over to Detroit. You you know, stop doing that, man. Stop protect, Stop doing that. Because when it happened to your child, the truth will come out then. And everybody out there always say, man, I know this happens. If you didn't know about the case situation negative comments stop assuming things stop making false stuff online and everybody believing and weighing stop trying to get a like or, or a comment under your post speak the truth if you know about it all these kids getting killed oh my prayers and heart goes this morning i was watching it. and it say a, a, a young mother of 15 and the, the well, gulf bank and antoine they knew my baby um was deceased when they woke up um it might be maybe medical conditions. I'm not. No, I don't know. But my heart and prayers go out to them um, and their family. Um, we're just gonna keep on praying for you guys for strength through the darkest storm of your life. And see a death, a mother for the first time. This should really. I've seen so many mothers of single children, one children or two. It doesn't make it. You have five kids and lose a child. You will bawl. You will cry. You don't party. You don't celebrate. You go in a, in a deep, dark space, under the deepest, in the deepest hole, and you cover up because you're afraid. You're afraid. But those are the names I put out there just now: Malia Davis, to Roger Carter, and um, yesterday I gave Malia Bass a banner, and I'm getting to Roger Banner together. Um, sometimes I'm sorry, I do so much things and sometimes I do stuff, but um, I'm going to the family and I hope City Hall families need help. You guys, stay blessed and keep on supporting the families. Pray for all the families, the mothers, the boyfriends, pray for them, okay?
because we, we can't judge. You know, we was not there when it happened. So you want to point fingers. People make mistakes all the time. You know, when they leave their daughter with their, with their boyfriends and they get molested for years, you know, and it's sad. What ways females molest guys also and guys molest females also. So it go both ways. I'm always going to say that. So love you guys. Stay blessed. And I will talk to you guys later. Fight for the families. Justice will come.